Hi everyone and welcome to this video, focusing specifically on how to write a comparison answer in an A-level English language or literature and language exam. I'm focusing on the component which gives you either two unseen texts, usually non-fiction, to compare, or one text you've seen previously and one that is unseen, depending on the exam board you're with. The methods I'm covering today go across the different exam boards. The three things we're going to focus on today are, what do the exam questions look like? What should you look for when comparing texts? And how to write an introductory paragraph. If today's video is useful, I'll follow up with one on how to write the main analytical paragraphs in this exam too. So let's start by looking at the typical structure of the exam question. On the screen, I have previous exam questions from edXL, AQA and OCR, the three main exam boards in England. These are taken from the combined literature and language A-level courses over the past few years. Now, there are a lot of similarities between these questions and the way they're worded and the way they're marked. In particular, all three mark schemes talk about students being able to compare and make connections between the two given texts, use subject terminology accurately and fluently, and to link their ideas to context in a perceptive or critical way. So the question is, how do you do this under the time pressure of an exam with at least one text you've never seen before? One technique I like to teach my students to give them a base to work from is the acronym MAPS, which stands for Mode, Audience, Purpose and Subject. I also find it works really well as a basis for your first paragraph when writing up your essay. What I've taken here is the first section from the two texts students were given to compare by edXL in 2016. Don't worry if you aren't with edXL though, as the methods I'm showing you work the same across all exam boards. Now the texts they give you always start with a bit of information about where the text has come from. And it's amazing the amount of students who don't read this and therefore miss key information, which can in some cases mean they misunderstand the text completely. Now, if you're with edXL, you might already be familiar with this text. But as I said before, it doesn't really matter what exam board you're with, as what they want from students only varies very slightly. So here we are told in the opening few lines, this is a transcript of a podcast discussing the transfer of files on UFO sightings from the Ministry of Defence to the National Archives. So we have our mode, it's a podcast, so a spoken text. We have our subject matter very clearly laid out, a podcast discussing the transfer of files on UFOs. So now we are looking for audience and purpose. Well, if we read the first few lines, we might find this out. So then we're told, from ghost rockets in Scandinavia to mysterious spheres tracked over Eritrea, the past masters team look at the records of unidentified flying objects held at the National Archives and ask, is the truth in here? The Ministry of Defence is now transferring files on UFOs to the National Archives covering 1978 to 2002. Then we have the first part of the podcast, Bob saying, Hi there, you're listening to Past Masters from the National Archives in London. I'm Bob. And I'm Joe. And this month we're looking at one of the strangest sets of records we have here at the Archives, the British government's very own X-Files. So we know this is a podcast from the Past Masters from the National Archives, which if you, if you haven't heard of it might tell you something, that it's quite a niche audience and past masters very much gives the impression that it's aimed at those that like history and maybe with this topic matter, conspiracy theories, particularly those about UFOs. I think podcasts are a really interesting mode to look at as they're very different to a TV show or magazine article that you might just stumble upon. You have to seek out a podcast, which normally means it has a very specific audience and purpose in mind. And here the purpose seems to be to look into the National Archives on UFOs. So we are looking at a piece recorded to inform, but also to entertain. Now we can do the exact same thing for the second text we have been given. So let's read it through. This is an extract from an article published in the Roswell Daily Record on Tuesday, July 8th, 1947. It is based on the report issued by the RAAF, Roswell Army Airfield, after a UFO allegedly crashed at the site in New Mexico, USA. From this, we already have our mode, it's a newspaper article, and we can take this information to determine the audience. With it being from the newspaper, the Roswell Daily Record, we can assume it has a fairly small primary audience, which is going to be the residents of Roswell, who are interested in local news. This is quite different than if you were given a newspaper article from, say, the Daily Mail or The Guardian, 
as you would then be expecting a national and perhaps international audience. So already we have our mode and idea of our audience. So then we want to look for the subject and purpose. Again, both of these can be found just in the opening introduction and the first few lines if we read on. RAAF captures flying saucer on ranch in Roswell region. No details of flying disc are revealed. The intelligence office of the 509th Bombardment Group at Roswell Army Airfield announced at noon today that the field has come into possession of a flying saucer. This tells us the subject matter is in about alleged UFO crash, so we can very clearly see the connection between this text and the first text. The use of the word allegedly up here is interesting and something we should take note of, and we can assume from this opening the purpose is going to mostly be to inform the residents of Roswell about the incident, and maybe as we read on, we might see a second purpose appear. I've also noted the date of the publication, 1947, which might impact on the use of language too, so it's good to take note of. So I've spoken for a long time there and got a lot of information before I have even read the main part of the text, which shows how important it is that you don't miss out reading that opening bit of information and how much you can get from it. Now, I would never recommend that you write your introduction before you read the rest of the text you've been given, but let's pretend we have read and analysed them. If you want to read them for real, I've put a link to them in the description of this video for you to access. But I've written up an introduction using these points, which I'm going to share with you and talk through. So here we have my introduction, and what I've highlighted in yellow is anywhere where I've compared the two texts. In green is where I've discussed my maps, my mode, audience, purpose or subject. And in purple, anywhere I've used subject terminology. These three things then linking back to the different things we know the exam boards look for in an answer. So let's read through what I've said. Both the speakers in text A, the past masters podcast, and the writer of text B, the Roswell Daily Record article, centre around a similar theme of UFOs and the likelihood of their existence. As expected from the mode of the extract, text A is highly informal in its language use, with omission of words and fronted conjunctions frequenting the text, whereas text B, as an article written in the 1940s, has a more serious tone and distant writer who relies on factual evidence. Although the topic of the two texts is similar, the audience and purpose differs greatly. Both have a niche audience, but for text A this is likely to consist of those interested specifically in history, in particular UFOs and conspiracy theories, who have sought out this podcast online, whereas the article in text B will appeal to those living in Roswell, who are interested in local news, meaning the language choices need to be inclusive. Text A's primary purpose is entertainment, with perhaps a secondary purpose of informing its audience of the files that have been transferred over from the MOD. Text B is an informative article questioning what is happening at the RAAF. From focusing my introduction around those four things, mode, audience, purpose and subject, I'm showing to any examiner that I understand these texts and why they've used language in the way they have, which is ultimately what they want to see from any English language student. I've also shown I understand this is a comparison question and I'm going to talk about the two texts together rather than doing what some students do, which is talk all about text A and then all about text B as two separate things. This is a structure therefore that will work with whatever text an exam board throws at you and a nice easy way for you to start your analysis. As always, I hope this video was useful to you and if you need any support in brushing up on your subject terminology knowledge, please look at some of the other content on my channel.